Bonjour, mes amis. Mes copains. I joke there with that last line. Um, really, I'm just trying to record a nice lighted video for you guys. Just wanted to be, you know, throwing my stuff out there, throwing my information out there for you guys, and just trying to be a good YouTuber altogether. I wanted to start this video with a quick line and say, I encourage philosophers and poets and writers and artists in this world, because this world needs many, many more positive icons to influence the young and the old and everyone to be bright spirited because there's no line between young and old there's no line between the 30s the 20s the teens the 40s really when it comes down to it when it comes down to artwork everyone can appreciate everything from its basic standpoint and, and point of view so i wanted to initiate this video for you guys and say that um, i'm having a little bit of coffee a little bit of beer and sharing with you guys my fine uh, connoisseurship the quick introduction Here's the coffee. Ah, ice cold coffee, that's what I like. Nice black ice cold coffee. I wanted to share um, an album that my friend uh, Tyler gifted to me recently. And this is a very highly recommended album that many of you are very familiar with, I believe so. And um, just one that you guys can uh, immediately familiarize yourselves with and find comfort in as um, Americans around the world, because I think we're all Americans, we all deserve freedom. We all deserve a chance in this world and a chance in this life to spread our wings and fly and uh, start our own businesses or have freedom of speech or anything of that sort. This is Aerosmith. Devil's Got a New Disguise. I love this album and um, my friend shared it with me recently. He let me borrow it for a little bit. And I have my stereo system up above and uh, I really enjoy this Aerosmith album just because it's very exemplary of the style of American freedom and just spreading your wings and feeling yourself and just appreciating that kind of keen freedom within certain bounds of human property, you know, properties of, of understanding where we limit ourselves as humans. Because there are many different countries, not to, not to get too political, there are many countries out there where I think the governments are simply mistaken and brainwashed and, and kind of feel themselves to become obligated to, to limit other personal freedoms definitely around the world. And I think that that is wrong and we deserve a, a basic freedom and freedom principles from every perspective around the world. I'll initiate this next part of the video with a delightful smoke for you guys because I know my, plenty of my fans are fellow smokers or enjoy watching people smoke, which believe me, I understand to the fullest extent. If you enjoy uh, smoking or you quit smoking recently and you still want to kind of endeavor that kind of fairly fairly pleasurable vice that many endeavor endeavor for and reach out to automatically with their money, their, their income of various sorts, um, many people purchase... Uh, Pyramid 100s, for instance, in the blue form. And this is something that I highly recommend if you are a smoker and you're looking for a cheap bang for your buck. Um, I always go blue. I rarely go red. I recently uh, purchased a pack of Red 72s uh, Marlboro because my friend uh, allotted that it was necessary to go ahead and uh, just, just just stick to Marlboro. And I believe I believe that to an extent. I am a believe me deep down I am a Marlboro. Um, loyalist but i believe that um when it comes to uh color variations in smoking there's not a wide wide difference but there definitely is a, a significant uh, factor that that delineates between blues and reds and this certainly is a blue cigarette um there's the basic profile there for you guys this is a 100 and i've i've met people co-workers over the past and various various whatnots who found that 100s were very undesirable for them and they found that they were very cheap and just um jet puff cigarettes and they they there there was no necessity to them they wanted the shorter more compact cigarettes that they could pack down get a quick smoke out of but for all of us smokers i think deep down we are all looking and seeking for a basic uh sense of um lengthiness to our smokes and uh just just delving into that kind of i want to smoke for a good seven to eight minutes instead of a basic three to five minutes if you know what i mean and uh, to appreciate the cigarette, of course, I have a combination of coffee as well, which is a basic necessity for me um, as a Westerner. And I believe many of my Eastern friends as well appreciate a good cup of, uh, cup of Joe in the blackest form. Uh, Folgers. Folgers, as I like to call it.
I'll smoke here for a second for you guys. To, to keep the video going um, while I'm kind of appreciating the smoke, I thought I would talk about a little bit of uh, polite banter um, in the musical field. I'm a musician myself, and I wanted to throw it out there. Um, check out the page, Average Dude. If you can find it, we are a band page on Facebook and on YouTube. And um, our logo is a basic AD logo, the letters A and D. We, we go into some various realms, and we're trying to record more music before Halloween this year. But we definitely delve into various um, acoustic properties, and um, I am also the percussionist of the band, so I, I appreciate adding a little bit of hardness and uh, background, background vocals as well for the band. But if you can find us, um, we're located in Casper, Wyoming, as our base, our, uh, our treehouse of sorts. Um, but yes, we are Average Dude, if you can find us. I'm uh, definitely, definitely aware that there are several other um, pages that might be called Average Dude. But I think we, we are trying to claim it um, as politely as possible as a band. But um, yeah, definitely go check us out, Average Dude, on Facebook and YouTube. Not to boost my wagon a little bit too much, I will go ahead and throw out there um, for um, the sake of purpose and the sake of uh, video a couple a couple songs that I really enjoyed as a kid. Um, some of you might be fascinated with me. I thank you for that. Um, just checking out my channel. Um, God bless you guys. Here are some songs that I loved as a kid and uh, that really affected me in my own artistic and philosophical style um, from the get-go, uh, ranging around 6th to 8th grade or so. Um, the first song that I wanted to mention uh, and put a great, great um, word of mention to is the song Pain, Pain by Jimmy Eat World. I think uh, Jimmy Eat World really strives for a kind of um, strong tone to themselves. Who, you know, they really understand the kind of beat that really plays in one's heart. And um, I really rarely listen to Jimmy Eat World, except for the song Pain. But it's just held such a strong background in my base, basis of life. And my dad always listened to it. He would let me borrow his iPod when I was like 12 or 13, um, back when iPods were first coming out and uh, popularizing. And I would find that uh, Jimmy Eat World would be one of my favorite bands to listen to, at least for that song. And I'm sure they have many, many other hit singles. A great band, all together. The next song on my list is one that you guys will automatically recognize as soon as I mention it. This next song is White Wedding by Billy Idol. Now, uh, there's a quick story, uh, a basic nostalgia here. Nostalgia is, uh, is for the winners, I say, and uh, it's, it's great to kind of cling on to the things of our past that kind of affected and molded us all together, in a sense. Um, White Wedding by, J by Billy Idol was, to me, such a great travel song. I would always listen to it with my, be my buddy Eddie um, in junior high when we were cruising around from uh, lake to town, town to lake, and his dad loved the song, and we would all play it and kind of get into it. And um, I just just recognizing that snippet of my memory, that kind of a snapshot of, snapshot of my memory, where uh, we would listen to White Wedding by Billy Idol, and it would just be so splendorous. And even to this day, the song hasn't dissolved on me at all. I still I still have loved the song to its fullest extent. I think it's one of uh, Billy Idol's greatest hits, without a doubt. The last and final song I wanted to throw out there from my um, my childhood would definitely, without a doubt, be The Ecstasy of Gold. And I don't mean the original um, from the movie um, with uh, Clint Eastwood and whatnot. Um, the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, I believe it was. The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. Um, Clint Eastwood has many good hits um, as a director and as an actor. And uh, he really strives for that kind of um, hit you hard in the heart, you know, basic to home kind of kind of feels uh, for the, for his movies, um, acting or not. You know, he knows how to strive and kind of gain from the point of view of the of the viewer of the movie. But the the song that I'm listing, "The Ecstasy of Gold," is actually the Metallica version, and I think uh, listening to it on long road trips as a kid and just kind of kind of feeling that kind of strength of the song and that 
that, that shimmering kind of um, beauty of the song um, from its director Ennio Marconi. Um, he, he knew how to kind of strive for that and Metallica perfect, perfected the whole song all together and really uh, gave me a great great uh, childhood memory I think um, driving around the, the roads and highways of Wyoming ranging out to Idaho and Washington. I went to Washington a lot as a kid and I felt like um, The Ecstasy of Gold by Metallica, the cover, was a great um, endeavor for me to kind of appreciate it and appreciate the kind of American Western value of things uh, from a cinematic standpoint at least, at least. That's a Metallica cover right there. Um, love Metallica, of course, as many others do. Not my all-time, but um, definitely a go-to, without a doubt. I wanted to also throw out there, um, on another side, flip the coin. Um, there's a YouTuber out there um, who is no longer with us. He passed away in the early 90s. And his name is Nelson Sullivan. Nelson Sullivan. A great YouTuber who knew what he was doing, and he 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 had such a confidence with filming filming himself with a basic 1980s camera. Um, Nelson Sullivan did. Um, there's a YouTube channel called Fifth Avenue Project. Fifth Avenue Project that he um, is is a a part of um, post mortem, and he um, plays into this whole character realm where he was a big um, influential uh, participant in the New York uh, dramatic scene. Um, in Broadway and whatnot, he he was very well known and renowned, and just uh, lo and behold, being a being a um, a Broadway character, he knew he knew more or less to uh, film himself and become a part of the uh, um, a whole scene and, and and knew to film himself at that time. I consider him the first vlogger of our of our American century, and uh, that's a great feat that many um, go uh, carry about their days as vloggers unbeknownst to. Um, very essential, Nelson Sullivan on uh, YouTube, uh, Fifth Avenue Project, definitely recommended. And it definitely is an art, vlogging altogether and uh, becoming a part of the scene. And showing yourself and, and demonstrating the kind of um, importance of participating in um, various other avenues of life that we wish to share with others and whatnot. Um, but yeah, guys, that's my video. I just want to throw out some polite names there and uh, share my share my thoughts, share my mind, and just kind of become a part of you guys. Um, thank you for watching my video altogether. I know that's a long, longer one, but um, I am Snowy Croquet. I am Garrett. You guys watch my videos. God bless y'all. God bless y'all. Peace and au revoir. Me, me, meow, meow. Mao? Mao? Mao?